What's going on hikers? In today's video, we're talking about one of my favorite things that I make videos about on this channel, and it is mistakes while you're backpacking. I make a ton of these. I learned some from comments. I learned some from trips I go on with other people. So just know I've made my fair share of all of these. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jeremiah Stringer, and here we talk about all things hiking and backpacking. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel because our mission is to increase your quality of life on trail. So I'm gonna have seven mistakes for you today, starting with number one. I took a little trip and got to go down memory lane on the long trail in Vermont. And I did a section hike on this trip, three days, and I thought, you know what? I don't need to bring a sleeping pad on this trip and it was an absolutely terrible mistake. See, I was hammocking on this trip, and typically I use an underquilt, but the problem with that is, at one point, we stayed at a shelter, and you can't hammock in the shelter. You can't hammock outside the shelter because it's kind of in an alpine zone, and you're gonna harm the environment tied to one of the trees. So, I was thinking, I won't need a pad at all since I'm hammocking, and I gotta tell you, I had the worst night's sleep ever on this trip maybe not ever but uh, I should have just should just done this I should have just brought this one extra pound sometimes you know you go on a trip and you think I'm gonna leave this at home it weighs too much and it comes back to bite you typically you're saving a lot of weight not me on this one I wish I had brought this pad with me because uh, it would have made all the difference. I ended up sleeping on my underquilt <laughs> on top of wood slats, and I lined up three of these little sit pads that people kind of donated to me while we were at the shelter, and <laughs> it was bad, it's bad. Our second mistake today is not checking your equipment before you leave. See, I took this filter system. This is the Catadyne Be Free, and I know some of you are gonna say, well, that was your first mistake right there, taking the Catadyne. Yeah, well, it has a bag that comes with it. Catadyne done great, but the bag had like a pinhole in it. And as I was using it, this happened to me before with other bladders, water squirting out the side. And it's not a huge deal, except I have dirty water in that bladder and I'm using it to squeeze through the Catadyne to filter it. And if it drips down the side of the bag and rolls down the filter, as I'm filtering, I'm gonna get dirty water in with my clean. And then Giardia, well, that's always bad news. <sighs> Number three on today's list. I'm not sure if this is the best way to describe it, but I am gonna elaborate, so hear me out here. I call it like losing my concentration. You're like, what are you, what are you talking about losing your concentration? Well, at the end of the day, for me, if I backpacked a long ways, that could be, I don't know, depending on the terrain, 10, 15 miles, I am super prone to injury. And I think what it is is, you know, I'm so exhausted, my mind is kind of in a white zone, and I'm just trying to get where I'm going. After 10 or so miles, I, I'm just head down, ready to, ready to be done for the day. So I can't tell you how many times I've rolled an ankle, especially just finishing up the hike for the day. And what happens is just mentally drained. So especially at the end of the day, make sure you are focusing in, paying attention to where you're stepping, and uh, it can get pretty gnarly out there, especially with the mechanical injury risk. Number four on today's list, it boils down to a lack of preparedness, and I would say specifically having a plan in place, also having the proper gear, that also includes clothing, as well as at least a generally mapped out idea of where you're gonna be going in this area. And I wanna give you a specific example that happened recently. So on this long trail trip that I mentioned earlier, we summited the highest point in Vermont called Mount Mansfield. And then right as we got up there, it started pouring the rain. So we skedaddled straight down and went about a half mile or so to a shelter and waited out the rain. Actually spent the night there and that's where I had the terrible night's sleep. But while it was raining, this family came in soaking wet, had on like cotton t-shirts like this. And uh, they, were, they were not prepared, no map, nothing like that. They said that they were gonna summit and then catch the gondola on the way back down, ride it down the hill. Well, the only issue is they're at real risk of hypothermia. You know, they don't have a map to know where they're going. 
and they also, they're only like an hour away from the gondola closing. And in those conditions, it would have been very difficult for me. I don't know about them, older couple and a teenage daughter, but for me specifically, it would have been hard to summit in that weather. I mean, there were through hikers that were waiting it out and uh, taking bad weather bypasses while I was there. So let, let's hit on the map for just a second. These people didn't have a map of where they were going. So this happens all the time when I'm out on the trail. People stop you and they'll say, hey, is it this way, is it that way? Especially if you're in a high traffic, kind of touristy area. For me, that's Red River Gorge oftentimes. When I'm taking my trips, I will get on the Onyx app and they actually have 650,000 miles of trail already on there. They're today's video sponsor, by the way. I'll either click on one of the maps that's already available. So the trails specifically are highlighted and they're color coordinated. Red is like steep, rough, rugged terrain. Yellow is kind of medium and then green is easy. Or oftentimes I'll use their tools and I will draw my own route on one of the trails that's on the app. Now, if you want to check out the app or you can go on their website, onxmaps.com, um, I have a discount code, JS20, for you to get 20% off if you do sign up and download their app. And uh, apps works absolutely awesome for me. It's got all kinds of information on there, like how far it is, how steep it is, your elevation gain, your elevation decrease, and uh, an elevation profile that's also color coordinated with the same design that I just told you about where the trails are color coordinated. So thank you Onyx Backcountry for sponsoring today's video and continuing to support the channel. I highly encourage you all to check out their app and check out their website and see if you like it, download it, try it. Number five on today's list is especially a biggie for me and a mistake that I've made in the past. Yeah, you probably know what this is. It's a portable charger and I pretty much always have one of these with me while I'm backpacking. The reason why is multiple, really. I have different things that need to be charged and <laughs> I have in the past made the mistake of not having things charged before hitting the trail. A biggie is your headlamp. You know, you always probably have a flashlight on your phone that you can use while you're uh, juicing up your headlamp, but Make sure it's charged or you have extra batteries if you're somebody that doesn't use a rechargeable headlamp. Also, my cell phone. I like my cell phone to be at 100% when I'm about to hit the trail. And I know some people don't like to use their phone at all while they're in the wilderness. But me personally, it's a huge tool, especially, you know, I just mentioned the app that I like to use. Well, if I don't have my phone charged, I can't really use that app. So. I charge my phone on the way to the trailhead and when I get out I want it at 100% and if, if I need to charge it along the way I got to have that portable pack. Uh, I'll throw this in there too and I mentioned this before on the channel but if you don't have the cords for the specific devices that you're taking with you that power brick is basically a paperweight right so make sure you have your cell phone cord and if it's a different cord for your headlamp or any other devices you know if you're somebody that uses a satellite device like a, a garmin in reach or something like that make sure you have the cords with you whenever you're going to hit the trail number six there's a few ways that this can happen but it is letting your gear mold and a ton of people have commented in the past with the hack of you know those little absorbers that come in all different things that you buy, especially you know stuff that's shipped to you, maybe clothing or whatever. They throw on those little silica packets. You can keep those. Don't throw them in trash. Keep them and put them in your gear storage. Mine is like containers and that kind of thing that I store stuff in. But if I don't let like my my water filter dry out before putting that in there, or even something like my toothbrush. I have a specific hygiene kit that I take with me only backpacking and that toothbrush can mold <laughs> and then that's bad news whenever I'm hitting the trail again or something like your sleeping bag, top quilt, under quilt, that kind of thing. If it got wet while you're in the woods and you leave it compressed and don't let it air out whenever you get home, that can get really moldy and really expensive really quick. Number seven, this one absolutely, it drives me bonkers, man. I mentioned the water filter earlier and I, I even take a water filter with me 
most of the time on day hikes too. But when I'm doing an overnight, I always have that water filter because this mistake is taking all the water with you that you need. And this happened with me and another buddy that I took backpacking not too long ago. He took like eight, 10, 12 bottles of water. You know, you just go to the store and buy a 24 pack of Dasani or Aquafina or whatever. He took all those out there with him. I was like, bro, <laughs> you know that a liter of water weighs 2.2 pounds, right? So your backpack is super, super heavy and we're gonna be camping next to a creek. So instead of packing in all the water that you know you're gonna need, take a water filter with you. And if you know ahead of time where you're gonna camp and where your water sources are, that's where that lack of preparedness really bites you in the butt. If you know those things ahead of time, you don't have to carry all that water with you. And I know, I know, all terrain is different. So some people have to carry liters and liters of water, especially through the desert, you know, whenever they're doing these hikes. But oftentimes, beginners will just pack their fears and they'll take all that water with them. And in reality, you didn't have to carry all that. You could have just filtered it when you got to camp or filtered along the way. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you comment some more backpacking mistakes so we can keep making these videos. I know I'm gonna keep making mistakes. If you've enjoyed, give me one of these, subscribe to the channel, and hey, kick the notification bell for the latest notifications. We'll see you in the next one.